And we know principles are just rules. If you live within the principle, you will benefit from it. Jesus said, whosoever, he didn't say just your mama and your daddy. He said, whosoever believe. And I believe if we as people abide, and I believe God is a principled man, right? I believe that the earth is operating on the principles of God. The Bible says that his word upholds everything. Everything is being held by the word of his power. And if we live in what he said for our lives, we can operate in God's power. There is a power in a principle. I believe if a person believes in Jesus or not and operate in a principle, they can benefit from that principle. They might not be going to heaven, but they can benefit from the principle. Right? Because the principle is universal. Just like gravity. Gravity is just not limited to your race. Right? It's just not limited to us as Americans. It is a universal principle. And if you honor the universal principle, you will reap its benefits. Uh, we're still in our uh, series, transformation series, Believe, Act. Uh, we still like, think, act, and believe like Jesus. <clears throat> and it's very important. Um, out of those three, I believe that believe is the most important. We are currently, this message and last week's message is currently in, we are in the act portion. We did the three messages in think, we're doing three messages in act, and we're going to do three messages in believe or be like Jesus. Amen. And so out of those three, I believe personally that believe is the most important aspect. Amen. Uh, belief is so imperatively important. Jesus said in John chapter 20, John chapter 6, verse 28, he says, Then they said to him, this is Jesus, they asked Jesus, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God that you believe in him who he has sent. Most of your work has a lot to do with how you believe. Amen. To believe something is to accept it as truth. Amen. And so we all say we believe in Jesus, but the continuation of that belief has to extend past just what he's done for you on the cross. It has to extend into your decision makings. It has to extend into how you handle your money, how you treat your family, where do you go, what you do. Your belief has to continue into every aspect of your life. If we really believe that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, then we have to accept the fact that his way is best for us and not ours. Amen? That is believing in Jesus. Amen. Just believing in Jesus isn't just limited to your salvation. He wants to get involved with how you think. He wants to get involved in your motives. He wants to get involved in every aspect of your life. Amen. Amen. What is impressed upon the soul would be expressed in your behavior. Man is belief expressed. Amen. And so thinking drives beliefs while belief drives behavior. Let's go and turn it another way. Behavior reveals belief and belief reveals thinking. All right. That is where we're at in our series. I love believing because believing has totally changed my life. My wife says I'm working on my fourth self. She said I'm on my fourth self. That's how many times I've changed in my marriage, like just the Lord has impacted my life so much um, that he continues to change you. Because once you reach a spot where you don't, you're, you're without knowledge, right? You don't know how to proceed. Only thing, you, you're very limited in your understanding. You don't know how to proceed. You run into a wall where your flesh is beginning to be revealed in your actions and your choices and your decision making. And you don't have no more revelation on how to proceed in your that is an opportunity for you to extend past your formal self amen that is where I humble myself and say Lord Jesus I don't know but teach me amen and so you continue to do that over years and years you will become someone you've never met before amen. why because Jesus wants to transform your life he don't want you to have one experience with him. He wants you to have many experiences with him. He don't want you to have one encounter with him. He wants you to have many encounters with him. Amen. The Lord wants to totally 
radically change your life. But in order to do that, you can't rest your faith in a previous experience. You must look forward to uh, future encounters with him to change and radically change your life. Amen? Amen. I love that stuff. Why? Because it's not on me to try to change anymore. Now I have to trust and continue to believe in Jesus. And that's what helps me change. It's the continual belief in Jesus. All right? Let's get into this word. Oh, today's message is titled, 10 Reasons to Obey God. Now, I, I want y'all to believe to, to, that we get through all 10, okay? <laughs> believe with me. Amen. It's going to happen. Amen. Thank you. It's going to happen. <laughs> amen. It's going to happen. Even if we got to cut off the camera and turn off the lights, we still going to get to those 10, ain't it, man? Okay. Ain't it right? All 10. All right, let's get to it. Ten reasons to obey Jesus. Ten reasons to obey Jesus. I'll be reading from uh, John chapter 1, verse 1, New King James Version. It says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him, nothing was made that was made. In him was life, say life, life. and the life was in, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your holy written word. I pray, Lord God, for the understanding and the minds of your people, <clears throat> that they increase in, in, in the knowledge, the wisdom, and the motives of you, God, in Jesus' name. We pray for uh, Triana Cumberland Presbyterian Church. Lord God, we bless them in Jesus' name and all the leadership there. We pray over our tithes and offerings, Lord God, and for those who have given, Lord God, those who don't have it to give, we pray, Lord, that you increase us, Lord God, financially, um, also spiritually, mentally, physically. Physically, Lord God, but most of all, in our love and knowledge of you, in Jesus' name, and we all said, Amen. 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 Repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I receive you as my Lord. I commit to your word. I do what you say. Come on, say that confidently. I do what you say, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, all right. Our first reason to, be, to obey Jesus is because he is God. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 49 in the New Living Translation says, What sorrow awaits those who argue with their creator? Does not clay argue with, does a clay, does a clay plot, pot argue with its maker? Does the clay dispute with the one who shapes it, saying, stop, you're doing it wrong? Does the pot exclaim, how clumsy you be. Why in the world would you tell God what to do? Amen. When you refuse to obey Jesus, you are telling God you know what's best. You, when you refuse to obey Jesus, you are arguing with your creator. Amen. The creator knows best for your life. He created you. He knows exactly what you need. He knows your future. He knows your husband. He knows your wife. He knows the job you need to be on. He knows the church you need to be going to. Why argue with your creator? Amen. Arguing your, with your creator or disputing with him or having another option other than what he wants will get you in trouble. How many times do we have to bust our head before we realize that doing what we want gets us in trouble? Amen. How many times, how many times we got to bust our head before we realize doing what we want get, gets us in trouble? So the first reason to obey God is because he is God. He created the heavens and the earth, and he lives on the inside of you. Imagine that. The one that created the universe and the expanse of all the stars and the, and the planets lives on the inside of us, and we want to dispute all of his infinite wisdom, amen, as if we know better than he. No other creature that's been created by God, disputes him. We the only ones that does it. And all the rest of creation is waiting on us to come in line with what he said. Amen? The number two reason to obey Jesus is, I believe personally, obeying Jesus is the secret of life. It is the secret of life. 
Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3 says, Who being in the brightness of his glory and express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had him by himself purged our sins and sat down at the right hand majesty on high. I love the, the study of life. What is the study of life? Biology. biology. I absolutely love biology. Why? Because it's amazing to me how everything just happens. It seems like it just happens on its own, right? We're going through a transitional season right now, which is fall. It's a blend between winter and summer. And it's a very, it's a transitional season, right? It is amazing how the leaves just begin to fall on their own. It's amazing how everything begins to adjust to the atmosphere that, that, uh, that, that, our, that our earth is spinning on the axle, amen, and, and begin to adjust everything on its own. And it's amazing that everything that's been created by God has a, seemed to have a life of its own, amen. And it amazes me. Have you ever, um, do you ever like watching those videos where you have people who've been, who live over 100? And, you, and, and a lot of times, I'll be wanting to listen to them, right? They, I'll be like, how do you get to be 100? Let me, you got something in that mind that can help me out, right? And when you, and um, I remember we had a couple going to our church at one point in time. They was married 60 years. And I asked him, I said, man, how did you get to 60 years? And he said to me, you know how y'all waiting? But that was, you, you see that anticipation? You want to know, right? And I'm like that, too. I'm like, man, give it to me. Give it to me. And he said, don't get a divorce. <laughs> I said, boy, that's something that's amazing that we're looking for this deep wisdom, right? And it's, rare, it's always something simple. Right. And then you listen to people, you ask, you ask them how they eat, what they eat and all that stuff. They, they are 100 talking and thinking. And you, have you ever seen those uh, those uh, over 100 uh, Olympics where those guys are running at 90 and 80 getting it right? And I'm uh, I'm always perplexed at the wisdom that comes from them. But I was listening to some videos and one of this one one guy was like 120. And he said this that really struck me. And I, I said, thank you, Jesus, for reminding me. Because it's all in God's word. Amen. The answer to life and the secret to life is all in God's word. And he says this. He says, I don't, he said, I forgive and release all bitterness every single day. Every day. I release all bitterness and unforgiveness every day, every day. And then he says this. He said, I receive the life of God every morning I wake up. Wow. He said, Lord, I thank you that your life flows through every part of my being. And he says, I say this every morning. And that's what I accredit it to. And I said, praise God. I'm going to start doing that. Yeah. Amen. I receive the life of God every morning. I receive God's love for me every morning. You know, the, the Bible is true. And if we would follow it, we'll be all right. And sometimes we think it's some other deep wisdom out here. And every time I go on these journeys and listen to other people outside of Christianity, because I don't just listen to uh, Christians. I listen to uh, every, a lot of people. I want to learn from people, right? Um, but I always hear something that reminds me of Jesus. I always hear a principle. And we know principles are just rules. If you live within the principle, you will benefit from it. Jesus said, whosoever, he didn't say just your mama and your daddy. He said, whosoever believe. And I believe if we as people abide, and I believe God is a principled man, right? I believe that the earth is operating on the principles of God. The Bible says that his word upholds everything. Everything is being held by the word of his power. And if we live in what he said for our lives, we can operate in God's power. There is a power in a principle. I believe if a person believes in Jesus or not and operate in a principle, they can benefit from that principle. They might not be going to heaven, but they can benefit from the principle, Amen. right? Because the principle is universal, Amen. just like gravity. 
Gravity is just not limited to your race. Right? It's just not limited to us as Americans. It is a universal principle. And if you honor the universal principle, you will reap its benefits. Please turn that heat down. Somebody. <laughs> yes. Woo. All right. <laughs> Number three. I believe obeying Jesus is the secret to life. I really do believe that. Number three. I believe number three is the reason, one of the, another reason that we should obey Jesus, which is because he loves us. First John chapter four, verse 19 in the New King James says, we love him because he first loved us. I believe that we should, our love for, G, for, for God is expressed in how we obey him. Jesus said that if you love me, you will keep my commandments and we will get into how we love him. But Really, we, don't, we wouldn't see clear on how to love God if we didn't first know how he loved us. Amen? I believe that many people have tried to love God without getting God, getting an understanding of how he loved them, and I believe people get it all wrong. Let's just ask Paul if he was trying to love God to his best of his ability before he got converted. He was pre persecuting Christians. I believe people can have a sincere heart in, try, in their attempts to trying to love God, but they can be sincerely wrong as well. You must get an understanding of how Jesus loved you in order for you to, to accurately understand how to express that love back to him. Really, he puts it in your heart to want to love him because he loved you first. And I believe if we try to love without experiencing God's love for us, then that's where the frustration begins. That's where we get into legalism and we get, we get into trying to please God without recognizing how he has, how Jesus has pleased God to the T and living within what Jesus done for us and how he loved us on the cross. We can never please God. Amen. So you must understand how Jesus loves you so you can understand how to love others. Because Jesus gives you a picture and a, an example that you now can go reproduce in another. And without that picture, you're guessing. And without Jesus loving you first, you're guessing on what you think God may like and what God wants. Amen? And the reality is, he, without faith, it's impossible to please God. So you must trust what he, how he loves you that he will teach you how to love. Number four is we obey Jesus because we love him. Now, it's a big difference between you loving uh, God loving you and now you loving him. All right. How do we love him? John 14, verse 23 says, Jesus answered and said to him, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word. My father will love him and we will come to him and make our home in him. We love our love is exhibited when we obey Jesus. That's when we prove that we love God. It's when we actually do what he say, when we actually obey him. Outside of that, your love is just a feeling and affection, all right? It's just, um, it's not true love. It's not true love. Uh, if your spouse, if you had someone that says they love you, but they never honored you, they never really came home, they never, they never, they never took care of their domestic duties, their marital duties, their they, they're, 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 they're duties towards you, right? And never really showed that. Would you believe them? Many people just got to talk. Jesus said, your, 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 your lip, you honor me with your lips, but your heart is far from me. Your heart need to be involved with your love for Jesus. Amen. And so we need to get into get in, get in a habit of obeying Jesus. And then when you when we when we say I love God, you should hear also I obey him. Love and obedience is synonymous. Amen. All right. Let's go on. Let's keep moving forward. Number five is because I fear him. Are y'all taking notes? Because I fear him. Stop playing with God. Stop playing with him. Fear him. 
What does it mean to fear God? Man, I wish I could preach this. All. Each one of these is a whole sermon, so um, y'all just be patient with me as I withdraw myself from each point. Amen, and go to the next one. <laughs> Psalms 33, 8 through 9 says, New King James, let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. The reason I said stop playing with the Lord is because, I don't know, just over the years, probably, um, I guess about last year, like two, two years ago, I had somebody working with me and I was telling him about Jesus, every, you know, and I was like, man, you know, the Lord started moving on me to talk to him. And I said, man, you know, get it right. The Lord ready for you. He's like, yeah, I know. I got out of program, but he got back in the street, started using again. And I said, man, it's time. It's time. It's time. Well, he was supposed to come to work the next morning, but he didn't make it. And the reason he didn't make it is because he OD'd. Yeah. I, um, it was another guy who died this year that worked with me. Y'all didn't. He never, he never came to the church. Um, but it was two days he worked with me. And, oh, Jesus. Uh, you know, I, I don't know if y'all know, but some, last year I went on a break in December. I, and the Lord asked me, do you want to win souls or do you want to make money? I said, Lord, I want to do both of them. <laughs> you know, and I found out that it don't necessarily work out too well when it's time to get some work done. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm too busy preaching and casting out devils and laying hands on folks in the yard and stuff. And I'm do too, I, I don't get it done, you know. I don't get work done. I'm glad I got another crew because I ain't getting nothing done. A couple, about a month ago, I remember, you know, I was focusing on the Lord. And I was consecrating myself to the Lord and staying away from stuff. And I looked over at the guy who was helping me. And I said, you know, Jesus loves you like that. And uh, dude start crying, and he couldn't stop crying. He was tripping about how he couldn't stop crying. And I said, man, Jesus love you. He wants you to surrender your everything. He was like, what in the, I can't stop crying. And I said, that's Jesus loves, man. He just wants you to surrender to him. Stop fighting. You try to be hard. Go ahead and let that stuff out, boy. Go on ahead and cry. Lay, your, lay, lay yourself down. Amen. Well, the one before that, I was telling you I spent two days with him. Well, he ended up, you know, I had to go to his funeral. We had to do a funeral for him. He, um, he ended up running from the police and swallowing the drugs. He ended up dying. And um, I, I, look, I look at rappers and people who represent God. In they, to me, in they sin, and they mixing them. You know, they, it is good that you're representing God and you're stepping out. But when I hear one dude who, I ain't going to say his name, who was, he, he is just beautifully talented by God, right? And he's singing, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. They shot him down on the highway two weeks later. And I said, you know, when I hear things like that, and I, death always supposed to sober us up, right? It's supposed to be a, listen, this ain't a game. It's supposed to be a reverential fear come upon you about how you doing, what you doing with your life. Stop playing. And I be begging folks, get it right. Come on, man. And the reason I'm begging them, because I know that it could be, tomorrow might not be promised for them. I done seen too many die that came in these services and started living. We just had one six months ago, what is it, four months ago, who was coming a month. Justin died, woke up. They, they, he just didn't wake up. He just didn't wake up. But he started coming. And Brother Pastor Nate was taking him, Brother Nate back there was taking him through mentorship. And he was starting to get on the calls. And he was starting to get involved in the church. Now, that one I got hope for because I seen his behavior change. 
I seen the joy come on his face. Every when I talked to him, he's like, man, I'm excited, Pastor. I'm excited. I said, good, Justin, keep coming. Keep doing it. And they don't know how, they don't know, they didn't tell me what happened, but he just didn't wake up the next morning. And we plan with our lives as if it's Russian uh, roulette. We plan with God. And we need to fear and reverence him. We've been around church so long, we think we got another chance, we think we got another day, and God wants you to repent today and do what he say. He wants you to do what he say now. Stop playing with him. Why am I like that? Because I've seen somebody be before me one day and they gone tomorrow. And you could be one of them. So I'd rather you not like me for saying that and you repent. Because it's more dangerous for me not to say nothing, placate with you like this is a game. It's more dangerous for me not to say it like this. Because I've seen them go, man. It's not a game. This is what we need. We need fear. And when I heard that dude got shot on the, I said, Lord, guess what it caused me to do? Lord, help me. Stay real. Stay, help me stay real with you, Lord. I don't, I don't want to be playing with you, Lord. I, I, you know, I didn't, I didn't do that right. I didn't say that right. I didn't do that right. I didn't say that right. I need you, Lord Jesus. Teach me, Lord God. Who, Jesus? That's fear. It's good fear. It's good for you. It causes you to avoid danger. That's good fear. Amen. That's a whole message in itself. Let me pull myself out of it. Amen. Let's go to six. Amen. Um, the sixth reason for you to obey Jesus is for your own deliverance, for your own deliverance. This very imperative that you understand this. John chapter 8, verse 12 says, Then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Um, when you follow Jesus, he's going to teach you how to avoid darkness. He's going to teach you how to walk in the light, walk honestly and truthfully before him. Uh, but he's going to also teach you how to walk in deliverance and freedom, amen? And so one of the one testimony I want to give is I remember there was a time in my life when Jesus was teaching me how to be a husband. Say husband. And he was teaching me how to be a husband because I didn't know how to be one, amen? And most of us don't know how to be, um, but we need Jesus to teach us, amen? And so I remember I was working, and on my job, my wife was at home with the kids, and I was asking Jesus to teach me how to manage my money, I remember when I first got saved, I went to Gaston, Alabama. A prophet called. I went to a youth conference. And a prophet called me out of all these folks. He said, come here. He said, you're an entrepreneur. I said, man, praise God. But you don't know how to manage money. I said, Lord, Jesus, why are you calling me out? <laughs> you need to take some classes. Boy, you don't know how to manage money. <laughs> and so we, we went through financial peace, and we went through a few times, right? But... We need specific instructions. Those things are very good for us to follow, amen, as principle. We live in those principles. He was a principled man. Financial peace would be, uh, it would be great for us all to go through because what he encouraged is to live in principles. And when you live in a principle, it works, yeah. right? But sometimes we need specific instructions, amen, uh, specific from the Holy Spirit. And so one time, I mean, I remember Jesus told me, man, I'm working hard, amen. I'm working real hard. And Jesus got the nerve to say, this is what Jesus got the nerve to say. He said, give your whole check to your wife and let her pay the bills. Because what I would do is, if, I, if my bill was $275 and all I had was $275, I say, you know what? We need an extension then. <laughs> we need a good old extension. Let's extend this thing all the way out. So I can keep a little bit in my pocket. You know what I'm saying? So, and, um, but, every, but before you know it, you extend it all the way past the extension. If you keep doing that, you, well, don't want that to get paid. 
man. And then when I got into business, I said, Lord Jesus, you got to help me because I want my money now. Is somebody talking about an extension on me? <laughs> no, no, I got to pay my bills on time. No, I want my money now. I got bills to pay. I don't want no extension. When you go in business, somebody try to do you like that. Change the game on you, baby. That's why you need to do what's right. But Jesus told me to give my whole check to my wife. Now, my wife, she'll spend the whole check on stuff, just everything paid, right? But wasn't nothing left, you know? And everything get paid, though. Everything on time, everything caught up, everything done, because she was a better manager than me. And sometimes when your wife, when your spouse is a better manager than you, you need to take advantage of that. Because you're going to live. <laughs> the life's going to be on. I remember when them like being out, and mama like, mm. your daddy. Amen. Amen. And so obeying Jesus, and I'm still obeying Jesus in that. That's why we got accumulation. Or oh, I'll be spinning up some stuff. But Jesus has also taught me uh, self-discipline as well. Just letting her do that has changed me to become like that. Amen. Amen. And so... Um, that is the reason you should obey Jesus for your own deliverance. You are, like I just said, you really holding your, you really holding the Lord back from um, doing what He wants to you in your life because either you lack knowledge or you refuse to obey Him. Amen. So let's go to number seven. It says, number seven is very important. It's one I love. Um, one, a number, the seventh reason we should obey Jesus is so that we can be a witness for Jesus. We can be a witness for Jesus. And when I was putting this together, I was just walking around the house and asking my kids and my wife, why should we obey Jesus, right? And uh, we ended up having about 30. And so I took all that and made 10. And so, so that we can be a witness for Jesus. And the scripture is Acts chapter 1, verse 8. It says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere. Telling people about me everywhere. In Jerusalem, which is the home, the hub, throughout Judea, which is the outskirts, and Samaria, which is the outer parts, and the ends of the earth. Now, I remember when Jesus first told me to tell someone. Have, have, have Jesus ever told you to tell someone about him? Yeah. This is, listen, when Jesus ever, that's, who said no? Not, oh, okay. Not. You got, yeah, not yet. You need to get saved. That's okay. <laughs> so um, I, I'm going to say, I'm like, you know he done told you. What, who, who, what, 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 what? So, um, so I remember Jesus uh, first telling me to tell someone about him. You know, it's very challenging because you're nervous and you're stepping outside of it. You don't know how they're going to respond and how they're going to act. And, and really, that's not the reason why we should tell people about Jesus. It ain't based off the excuses that come in our mind of not to. Actually, if an excuse come up, that's, a, that's really an indicator that you should. Amen? Because it's either going to do them some good or you some good. One, somebody going to get some good out of it, right? And so this is very important. This is very important. Your obedience to Jesus, to be a witness to people, really people, I done seen two Muslims get saved, two Muslims, and then an atheist. No, my wife's seen an atheist. You know, just based off our witness for Jesus, Hallelujah. how we respond in front of people. That's why I truly believe that's why you got a job. That's one of the number one reasons why you got a job. You're around someone you wouldn't normally be around, and now they get to see how you respond to life because you, you spend eight hours a day with them. People in there claiming to know Jesus, Right? But how is your life compared to those who claim to know Jesus and those who actually know Jesus? Now, this is one uh, testimony. I wasn't going to give this, but uh, one testimony is another testimony other than the two Muslims and the atheists. And those that we think is challenging, uh, racist folk, you know, we think that racist people is hard to love. They're not. They're human beings. 
They need somebody to love, treat them differently. All right, so when you have these type of, so I was on my job, and I had a guy on there who would just be watching me, man. And Jesus would teach me when somebody do me wrong, he would teach me how to bless them and do something for them or try to, you know, trust him to teach me how to respond, right? And so this guy been watching me for a few years, and one day he came back there. He came back there crying. He was like, Jasper, I had to tell him, man. I had to tell him. And I said, what you telling? And then I heard them out there just rumbling, you know. I'm, I, I, and I was like, what is he, what happened, right? And he said, uh, I had to tell them, man, they fakes. Man, they blah, 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 blah. And I walked out on the floor. And the first lady I came up to, she was like, Jasper, you better get your boy. <laughs> like that. And I said, uh, what did he do? What happened? And finally I got to the, 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 the core of the problem. And they was like, what you been telling him? I said, nothing, because we started hanging out. I was telling about Jesus. I was showing him how Jesus changed my life. And um, I ain't telling him nothing. And she said, uh, no, nah, you've been telling him something. He done came out here and told us that uh, <laughs> ain't nobody saving him but Jasper. <laughs> All y'all hypocrites. And I said, he said, what? And inside, I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. Because they be gossiping and you know what I'm saying. You know how it is. And I'm like, man, he actually told them. And they was mad because they thought I'd been coaching them. And he said, no, it's because I see how you live. He wasn't even a believer. He didn't want to be a, he, well, he believed, but he didn't want to stop smoking weed. So he said, he said, I believe, but I don't believe like you. And I said, okay. Um, but he said this. He said, this is what he told me as the evidence of why he said that. It's because he seen how they live and he seen how I live. He said, I don't want to live like you, but I definitely don't want to be like that. He said, if I ever want to be a Christian, I want to be like you. Because after somebody, when I come in, I'll be coming in with joy. You know, I come in and knowing I'm forgiven and knowing that Jesus took my sins away and, and knowing that uh, I'm not going to hell no more. And I'm walking around. Hey, I'm walking around like I'm famous. I'm walking around like I'm famous. Just like. I told my kids, I told my kids, I said, you walk around like you're famous, baby. We go to school. Why they like you? Why they, everybody like me? Everybody saying hello to me. I said, I told you, you got to walk around like you're famous. What? <laughs> and, and flat broke. <laughs> it, is the, it is the perspective that we got to have. It is our attitude that we got to have. People need to see Jesus in our attitude. He needs to see Jesus in how we walk, how we talk, how we live. It's more important that you live this life at your work and on your job than trying to impress me. That stuff don't impress me. Because I know what works when you live this stuff, and it takes years sometimes because people don't believe you. They don't believe what you say. But your actions, I'm telling you, man, your actions, how you treat people, how you love the unlovable. Who do you ask out for lunch? Did you go out to your same group, or do you invite somebody else into it? Jesus, help me. And when you don't live like this, and the stuff that people complain about, you ain't living this stuff, man. You complain about somebody not doing you right, man. Jesus know how to fix that. Amen. Amen. He know how to fix it, guys. He know how to fix it, guys. You need his word. You need to live in the same thing that brings the sun up every day. Amen. Jesus said, let that be. You need, to, you need to find out what he's telling you to do. And you are living that same power that, that the sun is rising off of. And the moon is, and the whole earth is turning. And you trying to tell me that Jesus can't fix it? And if you obey, Amen. everything is held up by the word of his power. Yeah. Everything is held up by the word of his power. And you fall in line with what he said. What he said. There's power available. Now, you will be, look like you're a failure. You will look like people overcome, look like people doing you wrong. It looks like you're, you're having um, situations are not lining up. 
And he's trying to teach you what humility is. He's trying to teach you what, what, what really holding your value in him is. And not in stuff. And not in people. And not in money. And not in stuff. Amen? Even though I enjoy, enjoy things, it still is not my life. Amen? The Lord want to build up your credibility in him where you have something to witness to someone about. I remember me and Nate, we were praying with someone uh, here uh, last week, and they had an issue, and Nate said, you know what? Man, shoot, it ain't the end of the world. If you lose your job, you just lose your job. It's another one. You know why he can tell somebody that? You know why that he can encourage another when they're faced with losing their job? He walked in it. He did so. Jesus helped them get through it. Your obedience to Jesus give you credibility in him. You have something to give another. It helps you in your counsel of those that's coming in your future. Amen. We don't credit obeying Jesus enough. Amen. Jesus want to build up your reputation and your resume in him. A victory after victory after victory after victory. Why? Because that's who he is. It accentuates him. It magnifies him that you win. It magnifies him that you win. Why? Because it's failure all around. It's failure all around. We so used to failure that we don't realize that God wants us to, he given us the victory. He given us to overcome. You can overcome yourself, woman of God. You can overcome how you are and the emotions that are coming up in your mind. Them devils don't have to control you, amen? You will have the victory. You're rich. You're rich. You're rich. Never broke. All the bills are paid. Business woman operating in truth. Standing in Jesus' name, never lacking nothing. Amen. Woman of God. Woman of God. Why? Because of truth, because of Jesus. Because of Jesus. He'll reverse any situation around. And your fight, your, the enemy don't want you to obey him. Your fight, the enemy don't want you to surrender everything to him. You think we just sing these songs for nothing? We don't sing these songs just because they sound good. Amen? Shoot, I cry on them songs because it's real life, man. Shoot, everything in the world trying to tell me this ain't going to work. You're going to lose this. You, this going to fall, and that ain't going to work, and this ain't going to work. And Jesus, woo, Jesus, amen? He know how to make us win. Jesus, help me. All right, let's retract and let's go. Keep moving forward. Y'all pulling on me. You wanted something too, did you? wanted a word, but I, I can tell. <laughs> hey, man, the Lord gave me a plan. <laughs> All right, you go with, woman of God. You don't need no man. Yeah, you do. You need Jesus. Amen. That's the truth. It is the truth. The eighth reason we should obey Jesus. Ooh, this is this this right here. This right here broke me. It gives you your obedience to Jesus give you authority over your enemy. Number eight. Gives me authority over my enemy. Number eight. This is this is this is. You can't tell the devil to leave that you are submitted to. You cannot have authority over any devil that you are submitted to. The Bible says Mark 16, verse 15 through 17 says, And then he told them, go into all the world and preach the gospel and the good news to everyone. Anyone who believes and is baptized will be saved, but anyone who refuses to believe will be condemned. These miraculous signs will accompany those who believe. They will cast out demons in my name. They will speak in new languages. Now, the commandment is to believe. See, many times we don't see belief as a commandment. He said anyone who believes shall cast out devils, right? Whenever you 
believe Jesus is Lord and submit to him as Lord, he empowers you through your lordship, through, the lord, through his lordship to you, to give you delegated authority over your enemy. Because you can't overcome your enemy. Jesus overcame him. And your submission to Jesus is what enables you to be able to overcome your enemy because you're submitted to Jesus. Amen. Amen. You repent for doing you want. You, you, you repent for doing what you want. You repent for following your own way. You repent for, for obeying another. You can't serve two masters. You will love one and hate the other. You will love. And we don't want to really acknowledge that we have hate for God when we are submitted to something else. That's what need to be repented of. Lord, sorry for hating you. Now, our emotions want to continue to love God when God's saying, you really don't love me like that. And what religion has done, they may love a song, they may love this, they may love that, but love is really, truly submission to God. Amen? Whoever you are submitted to is who you going to love. You are actually, your submission is love for that person, for that entity. Amen? So we retract and renounce our love for another outside of Jesus. We retract that by renouncing, meaning to uh, renounce, meaning to disregard, no longer consider as important. That's why we, when we take people through deliverance, we renounce a lot of stuff. Um, and it's important that we do that so that we can open up doorways for the Lord to come in and do whatever we want to in our submission to him. Amen? So, Obedience to Jesus gives you authority over your enemy. Without that, there is no victory. It is done in the spirit, but it will not happen in your life until that, is ha that happens. Amen? All right, nine. The ninth reason to obey Jesus is we're doing good, Lord. Thank you. 1 Samuel chapter 15, verses uh, 22, it says, the reason, the ninth reason, it is, uh, ninth reason to obey Jesus is, it's better to obey than to sacrifice. It's better to obey than to sacrifice. That means this, 1 Samuel 15, 22 says, and Samuel said, has the Lord as great delight in burnt, has the Lord has great delight in burnt offerings or sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken, to, to hearken than fat of rams. Now, let me bring you up to speed, give you some context here. Um, Saul was supposed to obey God by killing all the Amalekites. Um, the reason was is because the Amalekites attacked the children of Israel coming out of Egypt. All right, and so the Bible says that God said it was time for them to reap, and so God gave specific instructions to Saul to kill every living creature, every living creature. I know that seems harsh, but God said it. But Saul saw that, that there were some, uh, some things of value that he could keep and to, um, to somewhat... to somewhat disregard, kind of cover his disobedience, he chose to sacrifice some of the rams and the lambs that was left over from the slaughter, right? And the Bible says it is better to obey than to sacrifice. Sacrifice is something that you choose to do instead of obeying God. So it's like this. It's like Jesus saying, do this, get up at 6 o'clock in the morning, and you say, no, I'm a, you know what, I missed it, I'm a, let me just do it tonight, right? And Jesus wants you to do exactly what he's asking. That's a sacrifice. Anything you come up to give to God is a sacrifice, right? But to really obey is to do exactly. If, I, if I'm at a restaurant and I ask for Sprite, from the waitress, and she come back with Coke, did she do what I wanted? No, she didn't. Now, but she did go get you something, though. She put forth effort. She put forth her time. And she thought about giving you Coke. But is that what 
God asked for. Is that what I'm asking for? No, you didn't serve me right. So you did do something, and a lot of people want to be, get credit for doing something. But when you're dealing with God, he is asking for exactly what he wants. And if I'm a good servant, I'm going to, if he wants Sprite, I am going to get him Sprite. I'm not going to choose to give him what I want. That's a sacrifice. Amen. So it's better that you obey him and give him exactly what he wants instead of what you're choosing that he thinks he might want outside of what he actually asked you for. Amen. So it's better that you obey him than to sacrifice. It's better that you give him exactly what, you, what he wants. Amen. And so number 10, this is the last one. And then we're going to get into some Holy Ghost stuff. Number 10, the 10th reason why we should obey God. The 10th reason we should obey God is, is to avoid death. John chapter 8, verse 7, verse uh, death is separation from God. All right? So whenever we are obeying Jesus, it actually connects us to God. Right? And so this is very imperative that you find out what Jesus said so you can obey him because it connects you to God. He said, you won't be separated from me if you keep my words or keep my sayings. Words, sayings, and commandments is synonymous in Jesus when you, when you read in the scriptures. Um, and he says here, anyone who keeps my word shall not see death. Now, death represents being separated from God. Separation from God is what we see in the world, what we see a lot of times. We experience in a lot of death. Uh, and death, Jesus wants us to avoid these things. I would rather teach my children how to avoid circumstances and teach them what fire is, right? I want to teach them what fire and pain is within my household. But sometimes, if they don't heed to my instructions, they might have to learn for themselves. Now, we have a few, I have at least two people in the household that really don't think fire burns, right? <laughs> sometimes you have those personalities that really challenge the status quo. They challenge what is, right? I'm telling you that fire burns, right? And I'm trying to teach you that it's hot and it's going to hurt, right? But sometimes, and we all been there, we don't think it actually hurts, right? So we try to get close as we can to the fire. The fire represents death. The closer you get to the fire, the further you're getting away from my instructions. God would rather you heed to his instructions than you, than you go out and experience pain. Now, the lesson is going to be taught, right? Either you let Jesus teach you or the pain will teach you, right? So, so I, that's why, you, I mean, you know, I got two children that challenge that sometimes. They don't think fire burns, right? So they come back with a burn. And say, Daddy, ah, it hurt. It's fire. I said, Didn't, didn't I teach you about fire? <laughs> what the pain do? Reinforce what I said. Y'all remember that? Yeah. Remember Jesus said? Remember Jesus said? Remember Jesus told you not to, and you did it anyway. Amen. You're like, Ooh, Jesus, I need to obey you next time. Y'all remember just ignoring him? I think I heard. What was that? I don't know. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And then once pain happens, you're like, ah, oh, Jesus, yes, God. It reinforces that lesson. It really should bring a reverence in your heart to where you now listen for the future events. Amen. Amen. Because I know fire is hot. And sometimes most, a lot of us, I like to learn when somebody else go over there and get burned, right? <laughs> I like, that's how we really should learn, right? We should, it's enough bad examples. It's enough bad examples in the world for us to learn from other people's mistakes. Amen? And so Jesus, the 10th reason is, come on, Pastor Angela. The 10th reason is he wants us to avoid death. Amen? 
and we know that life happens and we can't escape everything, but self-inflicted things you want to do your best to avoid. Because people, and this is why it's imperative that you, yes, God, thank you. It's imperative that you watch who you connect to because what happens is their choices can sometimes bleed over into your pain as well because they refuse to obey God and because you're connected to them. Amen? And you can have your own personal relationship with God all you want to and your connection to a person will cause pain to come to you. This is why Jesus calls us to separate. Come out from among them and be ye separate, says the Lord. This is why God calls relationships not, he's not stamping his approval on every relationship. And there are some that he is. Amen. And a relationship that, that, that encourages you to obey Jesus is a good relationship. A relationship that encourages you to follow Jesus is a godly, godly relationship. And there are some relationships that God wants us to separate from, especially family members and friends. I know it feels difficult, but it's imperative that you begin to disconnect from some people. And you're not being mean. You're just honoring Jesus more. Ooh, Jesus. You're showing your love for Jesus more than everybody else. Jesus said, He requires us to love him more than our family. Love him more than our own selves. Because he knows what's best for our lives. Amen. Everyone stand it.